you can master the use of Fog of War in Albert Rodeo. Here's how. We'll show you how to explore fog settings, create and use fog shapes, modify and attach fog shapes, and enhance the visuals of fog with images and animations. Before you start, you'll need to open a room and a scene in your Albert Rodeo account. And you need to watch the introductory How to Use Fog of War tutorial, because this video builds directly on the fundamental principles shown there. Firstly, let's explore the optimal fog settings for your encounter. The fog actions are found on the right hand side of the tool divider. These five icons change how the fog works globally. The first two icons allow you to toggle the fill fog and fog cutting status, and I'll explain them together as they relate closely to one another. When fill fog is enabled and fog cutting is also enabled, all new fog shapes that I add are immediately revealed to the players. This is ideal if I want to clear fog on the fly, either because I've thrown together an encounter where my party took an unexpected turn, or if I'm running a hex crawl encounter and I want to reveal each new hex cell individually as the party progresses. Although it's a less often used combination, it is possible to have fill fog enabled and fog cutting disabled, and this can be used for more cautious live reveals of the encounter. As the fog shapes are added to the scene in the uncut state by default, this requires another step to cut them out and reveal what's underneath. Rather like using a scalpel on a large sheet of paper that's covering a real-life battle map, you can choose your cut before removing its middle. When fill fog is disabled and fog cutting is also disabled, we have the mode for preparing fog shapes in advance. This combination adds obvious fog shapes that clearly contrast with the areas that have no fog shape. This is the recommended mode for building up static fog in your scene, and you'll remember that when all your fog shapes are in place, you can always enable the fill fog action to fill the rest of the scene. Lastly, and possibly the least often used, is to have fill fog disabled and fog cutting enabled. With this combination, all shapes that are added are transparent as there is no fill fog for them to cut, so although you can see the outlines of the fog shapes that you make, your players cannot. A real-life example would be a scenario where a structure is collapsing sequentially and you want to prep fog shapes that represent the floor falling into an abyss. Then set those shapes to be uncut to represent large holes appearing. It's a very niche application, but if you can think of other uses for this combination, then let us know in the comments. Once you've chosen the combination of fill fog and fog cutting that best suits the current scene, you can use the remaining fog actions to fine-tune the fog appearance further. The Fog Preview button allows you to see the fog just as your players would see it, which is very useful for checking that you've got all the shapes in position, or to confirm that the right shapes are in their cut state and showing the correct parts of the map. This is also useful if you're using the Dynamic Fog extension, and switching to another toolset will remove the markings for walls, doors and lights. Just remember to disable this view when you finish checking the fog coverage. The Fog Style action produces a colour picker, which allows you to choose any of the usual preset colours for the fog, or to add a new colour with either the colour picker controls or by entering a hexadecimal colour value and confirming it with this button. Finally, the multi-layer action allows you to add fog shapes that directly overlap one another. The main use is to overlap a new fog shape deliberately on top of an existing shape so that you can trim the older one that's underneath. We'll look at this in more detail in the next section of this video. Another use of multi-layer is when you have pre-fogged a particular encounter, but you need to add another fog shape for an overlooked room, or to represent magical darkness. With multi-layer enabled, you can add new fog shapes that will override what's underneath them, allowing you to integrate last-minute additions smoothly. Next, let's create and use fog shapes. The eight fog modes are divided up into two selection tools, two freehand shapes, and four geometric shapes. Each one of these four modes applies its own fixed geometry to the fog shapes added to the scene. Once placed, all of these shapes can be moved, rotated, cut, locked, and scaled. The scaling handles for a fog shape are the edges and the four corners of its bounding box. Scaling is asymmetric and affects one side only, but you can modify this by holding the ALT key to swap to the symmetrical mode. Likewise, you can lock the aspect ratio by holding the shift key. Shift and Alt can both be held while scaling to get the benefits of both of them. The two freehand shapes don't limit you to a specific regular geometry. 
The polygon mode is useful for complex rooms with straight walls and sharp corners. And the brush tool adds anchor points as you draw with it, but it smooths the connecting segments between those anchors. Both of these shapes can be moved, rotated, cut, locked and scaled, just like the geometric shapes. The first of the two selection modes on the left hand side of the toolbar is the grab tool. This can be used to select a fog shape and reposition it, and you can also clone a fog shape if you hold ALT while click dragging on it. You can multi-select shapes by holding the shift key and clicking on each one, and you can select locked fog shapes by holding the control key too. If you ever need to select every last piece of fog in your scene, control shift A will select all unlocked and all locked fog shapes that are present. Then you can manipulate all of them at once. The last of the fog modes is the quick selection tool and it operates in a few different ways with some keyboard modifiers. It can select fog shapes just like the grab tool does, but you can also multi-select and highlight adjacent fog shapes by click dragging across them, making it easier to see what you've selected. If the ALT key is held when one or more fog shapes are selected, their cut state is told to be the opposite state of the first shape. If the SHIFT key is held and two or more fog shapes are selected, they are joined into a single shape, even if their edges do not meet. This can be a handy way to group together multiple smaller shapes drawn for a complex area, or to link all of the fog shapes for rooftops, which can then be revealed simultaneously when a player character climbs up on top of any of those buildings. Next, let's modify and attach our fog shapes. When you have two or more fog shapes selected at the same time, the overflow menu shows two new options, join and trim. The join function is very helpful in consolidating multiple fog shapes together into a single piece. The trim function is very useful when you want to cut away a piece of a fog shape. For example, if you have a circle and you want to trim it to be a semicircle, you can draw a rectangle and overlap it onto the circle, and then select both. Then choose Trim to cut the underlying circle along the edge of the rectangle. If you're unsure which shape is on top and acting as the cutting edge, you can move one of them and bring it to the top of the stack, as shown in the Outline Extensions Fog Layer display here. And you can also reorder shapes in Outliner too. Opening up the overflow menu again, you can see the attach option, which allows you to attach a fog shape to another item in your scene. This has several applications, for example, if you want to make a note visible to your players regardless of where it's placed in the scene, you can draw a cut fog shape over it and attach it to the note itself, so that it moves with the note, and, crucially, if the note is hidden, the fog shape will become uncut, that is, it will turn opaque at the same time, so that your players don't have a hole in the fog through which they can see spoilers. You could also select all of your fog shapes and attach them to their map asset, which would then allow you to move and scale that map while retaining all of the relative positions and sizes of the fog shapes. This is ideal if you realise that your map has the wrong grid scaled after you've added your fog. The Accessibility Options name field could be used to give a specific label to a fog shape, in case you need to be able to find it in the Outliner extension quickly, although this might rarely be needed. The last of the core features in the Fog Shapes Overflow menu is Edit Path. For all four of the regular geometric modes and the two freehand modes, Edit Path allows you to move any of their existing anchor points by click tracking on one of the small circles at those corners. If you hover your cursor over one of the lines between anchors, you can add new points with a single click and then move those as needed. You can also delete any of those anchors by double clicking on it. All of these fog shapes can also provide Bezier control points that adjust the curvature of the line between two anchors. By alt click tracking on any line between two anchors, you add linked Bezier control points for them that work together to make a smooth curve in the same direction. You can add these control points to any of the other line segments when you alt click drag on them, and can quickly create pleasing curved segments. However, the curved wall of this room is not a semicircle, so let's adjust some of the anchor points and then to get more control, alt click on the linked control points to split them apart so that they can be adjusted independently, and you can use the control key to override snapping. These options provide a huge amount of flexibility in adjusting the fine contours of any fog shape that you've made. If you want to delete Bezier control points, double click on any of them to delete that pair entirely, forcing the edge of the shape between those two anchor points to become a straight line. Finally, let's incorporate images into the fog layer. 
When using the dynamic fog extension, having your own images in the fog layer can look really good because they replace the flat color fog, but they also gradually vanish when a character's light approaches. I've already prepared this map with fog shapes for the buildings, but I also have the artwork for each roof, so I can add those images into my scene as props, and then use the outline extension to drag them up into the fog layer above those existing fog shapes. Now, when a light-enabled character is moved up to the building's open doors, its light will cut away the building's roof so that my players can see inside. Another example would be using a sketch map of a location that gives a rough idea of the layout, with a detailed battle map showing through as the party explores. You can also place animated images in the fog layer, like this mist asset, that lends a sense of mystery and foreboding to the areas that are beyond the range of the character's sight. You can even add the weather extension's environmental effects in the fog layer, either hosted on a drawn fog shape or applied to an image that's been placed in that layer. This allows you to dynamically update that animated effect. Lastly, you can also duplicate and align the original map image and move that copy to the top of the fog layer. This will give you an auto-hide effect for any tokens that are not illuminated and are not directly in the player's line of sight. We've looked in detail at the five global fog modes, the eight fog actions, each fog shape's contextual and overflow toolbar functions, and have also seen how to place images into the fog layer so you're now equipped to master the core Fog of War system and the dynamic fog extension in your games. To learn more about Albert Rodeo, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or click another video to keep watching.